Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to play another trading game. Try to reach 2100 on Leeches Classical. Uh, so far my, my rating is uh, 2084, so I have another 16 points to go. Played one game yesterday and they drew it. I was a pawn up in an opposite color bishop endgame. Uh, that wasn't enough to win, there was no way to, to break through. Now I'll try another custom search. Uh, I've created a game where the lowest traded opponents can uh, can be 2050. So yeah, I'm hoping to play well uh, for the rest of this challenge. Uh, if I get two wins in a row, that should be enough to surpass 2100. A defeat or a draw against a weaker player could set me back again, but I hope that won't happen. So I'm preparing for two tournaments I'm going to be playing in December. Um, I've been solving a lot of tactics. Uh, I've started new books on tactics and okay he's 2050 exactly which is as bad as you can get if, if that's the lowest bracket he plays e4 uh, i don't know i kind of want to keep things safe and play the Karakan, but then again i would love to play the sicilian which is now my main or e5 i'm going to play the Karakan because I, i'll just try to finish this challenge as soon as possible and try to get to 2100 as soon as possible okay uh, because my plan is uh, since i'm working on tactics a lot a lot a lot at the moment uh, my plan is to uh, finish this challenge and then stop playing chess uh, and just train until december 7th and that's it so i kind of think that i need uh, need to stop playing games in order to improve uh, tactics faster. So my plan is to reach 2100 and then stop for... Well, if this happens tomorrow, then I will not be playing until December 7th, which is uh, 19 days. Or 20 days. Okay, uh, knight c3 is a weird move. Let's get into the game. Um, usually in the exchange, Karo Khan, you want to play c3. Not knight c3. Uh, now his queen doesn't have b3. Uh, his queen and bishop don't have a battery on d3 uh, and c2. Uh, his pawn on d4 is weaker. So, for example, a move like bishop g4 here could force uh, him to play bishop e2, then I play e6. So, th this is just... Uh, I mean, it's it can be played, but it's just weird and uncomfortable. I don't know if he usually plays this, but the knight on c3 is badly misplaced for white. Yeah, now as you can see, he is already playing bishop e3, which is not the ideal square for the bishop. Usually white in the exchange Karo Khan is choosing either bishop g5 or bishop f4, depending on what black does. So let's say I've played, so bishop e2, e6, and then if he plays bishop f4, I don't have bishop d6. And if he plays bishop uh, g5, then I sort of have to play knight f6, pin my knight, and my bishop should go to e7 to one pin. Uh, okay. I'm going to play e6, which brings me closer to castling. I don't want to do anything rash here. So there will be plans uh, like knight b4. If he plays bishop d3, I still think he should play bishop e2. It's just safer. Yeah, okay. Now, knight b4 just dislodges the bishop, so I have a free tempo I can gain at any point later on in the game. So, I think knight c3 is imprecise, bishop, d bishop e3 is imprecise, and bishop d3 is imprecise. What he should have played, since he already played knight c3, is just bishop e2 instead of bishop e3, thus defending his d4 pawn. So, okay, now, now let's just develop. I mean, those are slight, slight strategic advantages. There's nothing major going on in the position. What I what I would want to do here is bishop d6, rook c8, knight b4. Uh, well, yeah, he can gain a tempo there. I don't really mind. I'm never going to take the knight. And, I mean, if he plays g4, then... It's kind of obvious that he can't really castle queenside with the c-file semi-open with my knight coming to b4. Yeah, okay, uh, now g4 makes even less sense. So, do I want my bishop on e7 or on d6? Uh, on d6 it would allow knight b5. So, if I want my bishop on d6, I want to play rook c8 beforehand. 
so so that if rook c8, uh, bishop d6, knight b5, I can go bishop b8. And rook c8 is also useful for uh, knight b4, where if he, let's say, moves his queen to e1, which wouldn't be a good move, knight b4 would win the bishop pair or the c2 pawn. Same goes if he if he moves the knight, either the bishop pair or the pawn. But then again, I want to develop my dark squared bishop to castle as soon as possible. Then again, starting a minority attack with his pawn still on c2 is kind of weird, so a6, b5 shouldn't be the best choice here for black. So my candidates are bishop e7, rook c8, a6. If I go bishop e7, okay, he still can't move the e3 bishop because I'm going to take on f3. Or I can just take on on d4 there immediately. Queen b6 actually threatens two pawns. But not while he has knight a4. So okay, a6 b5 may not be as silly. But it seems like those are too slow in this situation. So I'm going to play rook c8, just increase the pressure tactically on his position. Uh, making knight b4 a lot stronger. He should probably play bishop e2, which is, of course, a waste of tempo because he already played bishop d3, but it's, it should objectively be the best move. Now bishop d6 is a better move because bishop d6, knight b5, I go bishop b8 and have a lot of annoying pressure on the diagonal. And I sort of want to play a6 with tempo, so if I go bishop d6, bishop b8, bishop uh, d6, knight b5, bishop b8, a6 is a tempo on the knight. Mm. Volunteering his bishop on c6 is weird. He will most probably play g4 and knight e5 try to put double pressure on my knight but it's already defending by defended by the knight and now bishop d6 is all that much stronger because he doesn't have knight b5 so bishop d6 g4 uh, bishop to g6 knight e5 i can just ignore that uh, and no no problems there so okay bishop d6 i'm expecting g4 knight e5 uh, g4 knight h4 i'm not afraid of i would happily give up my bishop when the h file would be open now yeah th this is the concession black has to make if bishop d6 then his bishop can pin my knight on g5 if bishop e7 then his bishop can go to f4 but he's already wasted wasted the tempo on on bishop e3 so that's not such a big problem i'm just going to castle that's necessary Now I'm threatening bishop f3, and if gf3 his pawn structure is ruined, if queen f3 I take on d4, if he takes on c6 I take the queen, and that should be good. So g4 should be a candidate for him here. Uh, also after, wow, okay, gives up the bishop. Now the question is, what, what do I want to do? Do I want to take with the rook and put pressure on c2? Or do I want to take uh, with the pawn and then go for c5? I, I sort of like taking with, with the rook because I want to keep two pawns on that side of the board. So rook takes c6, knight b5, bishop b8. If he plays c3, I'm playing a6. So it's not that easy to play c3. Uh, Okay, I'm, I'm taking with the rook. He doesn't have knight e5 because I take with the bishop. He takes with the pawn attacking my knight, his queen is hanging, so it doesn't really work. Unpinning his queen. If I go bishop g6, 
he could go uh, queen to b5 but then rook to b6 and if queen a5 i can just take on b2 if queen a4 defending c2 uh well i, I don't know should go bishop e7 He is threatening to play knight e5 next. So bishop g6, let's say queen d2, uh, and he plays... What do I do to stop knight e5? Hmm. I could move my queen, force him to give up the bishop pair. Could play bishop b8, uh, but I don't really want to do that. Could play bishop e7 uh, to meet knight e5 with something like rook c8 and then try to try to challenge his knight with knight d7. Or I could just snap that knight right off and claim that by giving back the light squared bishop I've gotten rid of his best piece, the knight that can come into e5. Because after bishop g6, queen moves, knight e5 can take my light squared bishop anyway and ruin my pawn structure in the process. And knight e5, bishop e5 always threatens my f6 knight. Then on the other hand, if I take on f3 now, queen f3, bishop e7 unpinning knight e4 i don't really have although i, I could play knight so knight e4 knight e4 d4 queen e4 no bishop e7 queen e7 okay knight e4 knight e4 knight e4 knight e4 d4 bishop e7 queen e7 queen e4 yeah i don't have rook c2 Yeah, I want to take that knight. I don't want to leave the knight there. It just knight e5 seems like a very strong threat. And usually in the exchange Karo Khan, the f3 knight coming into e5 is the biggest threat uh, Black is facing. So this may not be sound, uh, giving up the advantage of having the two bishops, but I think on a practical level it's a good decision. Uh, and now it should be equal uh, with me having a chance for a minority attack with a6, b5, b4, trying to weaken uh, the c2 pawn. And it's not that hard to weaken. In fact, after a6, b5, b4, the knight has to move. I have knight e4. The c2 pawn is hanging. It's not easy to play this for, for white. So I think I have a small, small edge. Why would he do that? I. This is a very unsound idea, just giving up his bishop like that. My bishop is definitely better than his knight. He has a weak pawn on d4. I don't think he should have played that. I'm threatening queen b6, winning two pawns, winning one of the two pawns. Although again, uh, knight a4, but knight a4 can now be met uh, with queen to b5, and if queen b3 can just take... Uh, and win the c2 pawn. So this is bad. Giving up the bishop is bad. Has to be. So I now have an ideal version of the exchange Karo Khan for black. He has no compensation for, uh, for, for giving up that bishop or no justification. I mean, what's the idea? I'm going to give up my bishop, weaken my d4 pawn some more. In the process, take your knight, which is controlling e4, I don't see that working for him. I mean, he just weakened his pawn for no reason. So now he has three weaknesses, c2, b2, and d4. And after a6, b5. Uh, 
Why didn't he think before taking on f6? Thinking now is far less useful. Yeah, okay, just queen b6 should just be good. Queen b6, knight a4, queen b5. If he goes knight to c5, I can take on, on d4. He takes on b7, but just, yeah. Okay, queen b6, what does he do against queen b6? Queen b6, knight a4, queen b5. Uh, if he covers with his queen, I exchange the queens, he takes with the c pawn. Ah, then c2, then c2 is not hanging. Queen b6, knight a4, queen b5, or queen b4. Aha, uh, uh -huh. okay, queen b6, knight a4. Queen b6, knight a4, queen b4, queen b3. Takes, c pawn takes. Uh, and if I go rook c2, he goes back to c3. So I wouldn't say that's a huge advantage. So it may just be better to go a6, b5. Kind of, I kind of don't want to be facing knight a4. But if I go a6, b5, it makes it far easier for him to go knight a4, knight c5. Isolating his his deep pawn is good enough, I think. So I'm queen b6, knight a4, queen b4, queen b3 takes, c takes. He has a misplaced knight and a weakness on 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 d4, and I can then use the opportunity to just go uh, to go b5, but then he has knight c5. But then I go bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes. Okay, I'm going to do that because uh, it's not that easy to meet. Knight a4, queen b4, queen b3, queen takes, c takes, b5. He doesn't have knight c5 because bishop d4, rook d4, rook takes c5. If he goes back to c3, uh, then I can just go rook 2. Uh, no, that's not that easy actually. Okay, let's just follow up what I... What I wanted to do, and let's continue that way. So I'm expecting queen b3. Uh, that's probably the only move to save material. Uh, and I'm going to take the queens off and just play for small structural advantages in my position. I mean, he has to play queen b3. Otherwise, I either take on c2, take the knight, or take on d4. No way to save material otherwise. Yeah. Okay, and now takes, c takes, b5. I'll just, I'll just play what I imagined I was going to be playing. And I don't want to waste time. So I'm pretty sure I'm just winning a pawn with b5 and b4. B5, knight, c3, b4. Or am I? B5, knight, c3, b4, knight, a4, rook to c2. If I go b5, he goes knight, c5, I take on d4. Then he can take on b7. B5, knight, c5, bishop, d4, knight, b7. Well, I would want to trade my b7 pawn for his d4 pawn. Well, for the moment, if I go rook c2, 
He doesn't have knight c3 because the b2 pawn is hanging, so I feel like that's a very active move. So rook c2, I'm expecting him to challenge my rook with rook a2 c1, but then if I take, I win d4. So rook c2 seems like a very good move. Very active. Uh, bishop d4 has become way more powerful. My bishop is much better than his knight. His pawns are doubled, his d4 pawn is isolated, so I'm basically a pawn up on the queen side. Okay, let's just... Let's just double up my my rooks, because if he goes knight c5, I'll play b6, and he's going to be forced to go back here, and then I just take on d4. And if he goes knight c3, I'm going to play a6, b5, b4, and force the knight away. So I am just playing for peace activity and structural advantages. Okay, he plays knight c3. Uh, I don't see a big problem with that. Still, rook c1 is impossible. Uh, a6 is the continuation, and there's no problem with a6. I'm not afraid of knight e2 for the moment, even if he plays king f1. So king f1, b5, knight e2, I don't think is that strong. I'm actually wondering what he does against bishop h4. If he plays g3, he is weakening his structure some more. like he heard me <laughs> okay uh, yeah let's let's play b5 knight e2 defends the d4 pawn but I mean I should still be much better just need to lock down his weaknesses on the queen side I believe that a a4 is not a bad move here even b4 but b4 would allow rook c4 and the pawn would be a target A3 I did not consider. Now I'm now looking at rook b8 and b4 or bishop e7 and b4. But I think rook b8, b4 is the best. Rook b8, what does he do? I'm just going to play b4. Uh, if he goes b4 himself, then I have the c4 square for my rook. So I'll just play rook b8. I need to not waste too much time. He can never approach my, my rook with his king uh, as long as my rook is on the second rank. That would be almost impossible. So I'm not afraid of something like king e1, king d1. And if I manage to go b4 and he takes, then b3 is terminally weak. 
So it's hard to play with two weaknesses, doubled pawns on the B file and D4. Usually there's a rule that if you have two weaknesses you can exploit in your opponent's position, that's, that's enough to win. Here I have two, so theoretically I should be winning. In practice, who knows? Knight a2. So what of a5? What if I play a5? He has just locked down another one of his pieces. It's a very bad square. So a5, he wants to go rook c1. The problem with rook c1 is uh, I just take and win the d4 pawn. And if rook, uh, rook b to c1, I can just take on b2. If rook d to c1, I can just take and take on d4. So I, I don't see a problem with a5. I, of course, need to stop his knight from coming into b4. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that his knight is stuck on a2. I'll just... I will now play rook uh, b to c8 again. And if he goes knight c3, I have b4 prepared, so I've gained the tempo. If he doesn't, I've managed to remove his knight from the c file, so his knight is worse. So, this should be an improvement for me. And my next plan is just king f8, king e7, king d6, or king d7, get my king closer to the c file, closer to the game, maybe d6, so that if I take on d4, my king can enter. I mean, considering peace activity, I'm miles better, pawn structure also, so this shouldn't be too hard to convert, I just need to play precisely. I'm two minutes down on the clock, which is not such a big deal, it's not hard to play this position, it's not too tactical. I feel like I'm really, really close to winning some material. Okay, now rook b to c8, and if he does nothing, I'm thinking about playing a4, weakening the c4 square by taking on b3 or having him take on a4, and then, okay, I actually considered knight c1, and then uh, playing for rook c4, but now, and he's not threatening knight d3, knight c5. Because I can just take on, on d4, so that's not a big threat. So a4, knight d3, takes on b3, and I will be threatening rook c4, so that's fine. I don't see a problem with a4. a4, if he goes b4, uh, then still, I mean, I have. I have the c4 square for my rook. a4 takes, takes. Can he attack my a4 pawn? He could go knight back to a2 and knight to c3, 
but in the meantime, I have rook c8, rook c4. So I think a4 is fine. Again, I don't want to waste too much time. I need to lock down his pawn structure, and even though this is undoubling his pawns because of the Ampasan rule, I'm blocking two of his pawns with one of mine. So if takes takes uh, b4, I just take a takes b3, and if rook takes b3, okay, b4, it's perfect. Okay, so now he wants to go knight a2, knight c3, but I have time for... Uh, oh, I have to be careful not to blunder this pawn away. So if I go rook c4 now, he's going to go knight e2. If I go rook c8, he's going to go knight a2. And rook c4, he's going to go knight c3. Uh, takes on d4, knight takes on b5. I don't want to allow that. So I think I want to force his knight to a2 first. To e2, I'm sorry. And I want my b rook to still keep the defense of b5. Because once I get rid of the d4 pawn, then I will have uh, weakened the c5 square some more. Okay, now, a rook to c8 makes perfect sense. But then again, he could go knight c3 there. Rook c8, knight c3. Still, I don't want to do that. So maybe I should just get my king over into the position. So what if I get my king to b6 to defend? And can he go rook c1 now, finally? I really don't want to trade my b pawn for his d pawn. So rook c8, knight c3, bishop d4, knight b5. And then <clears throat> he has knight back to c3 and winning the a4 pawn, which means that I would have to take on c3 with my bishop. Then I would have a pass d pawn. But okay, I, I have to go for that. I'm wasting too much time. Knight c3, I'm just going to take on d4. I don't think I have a better option. Knight c3, bishop d4, if rook d4, he loses the exchange, so knight b5, I go bishop f6, if knight c3, I take it, win a pawn. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 he is threatening to go knight d6, I missed that. So knight c3, bishop d4, knight b5 threatens to win the exchange and to win the bishop. So I would have to go bishop e5. That would be the only move to control the d6 square and to get my bishop from the attack. So I, the reason I wanted to play rook c8 is I don't want to allow rook c1. If I allow rook c1, he's going to be equal. Okay, this just stops uh, bishop e5, which is a good idea, by my opponent. Uh, <coughs> so now, let's go over that again. So rook c6 improves my position. I'm not hanging anything on d6 anymore. And I can play bishop f6. So that's fine. Okay, rook c6 makes a lot of sense just securing my position. 
and the same combination again knight c3 can be, be met with bishop takes d4 and if knight b5 I now have bishop f6 because my exchange is not hanging with knight d6 it's defended by the c6 rook Now we gain a tempo. So rook c2 rook c2 he moves the king and I can go rook c4. But do I want to play rook c2? Now let's just see what he does. I'm getting very low on time. I feel that has to be a mistake because now rook c4 is a is a strong move. Now I feel that his position is locked. I could give up the exchange, but I really don't want to. Uh, knight c3. Uh, if he plays knight c3 now, I would give up my exchange for two pawns, or for a pawn, to be more precise. So knight c3 is a threat here. No, not, not really. Knight c3 I would go uh, rook h2 or something do I need to go rook back to c8 or to c7 Knight c3 is annoying because when I take take he has rook d3 defending the a3 pawn. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to retreat. I feel that I shouldn't be giving up my b pawn. At least not so easily. Now knight c3 I have uh, rook to b8 which is a passive defense maybe that's just the wrong way to do this. I'm definitely playing passive moves now. Well, this I'm sort of happy to see. My, my rook is just better on, on c4. Uh, so, now knight c3, rook b8. Uh, if he ever plays rook c1, I don't have to trade. My, my rook is already on c4 and I can just recapture with the pawn.
No, actually, now knight c3 is a horrible mistake because d4 is hanging. So this was imprecise. Okay, he wants to trade, that makes sense. Uh, so his knight is going to be left on, on c3 if I don't do anything, so my b5 pawn will fall, so I can't trade. Uh, and I need, to, I need to play this position safely with the weakness, so I'll just bring my king closer, I think. So rook takes c4, d takes c4, gives me frontal pressure on the pawn as well. So just king f8, I think I need to get my king closer. I would like to take with the b pawn, because then there's no target on b5, but then there's a target on a4, and it gives him a passed pawn, so... Should I take with the rook first? Maybe I should take with the rook first and trade both the rooks. Although I don't think that's a smart decision. Taking with the C pawn, taking with the D pawn allows knight C3. Taking with the B pawn allows knight C3. Taking with the rook allows rook C1. At least that gets his knight out of the way. So do I have so rook C1, king E7 takes. No, I have to take, knight takes, then it will take him several moves to get there. So I'm, I'm just taking with the rook, I believe that if he plays rook c1 I need to take, no I just hung my, no I didn't, okay, no d4 is still unprotected. So he needs to go rook c1 first, and then he's going to have to waste three moves to go knight e2, knight c3 and to take, so takes, takes. King e1, knight e2, king d2, knight c3, king c6. I have enough time to defend. So rook c1, rook c1, knight c1, king e7, knight e2, king, no, uh, king d7, knight c3. King c6, okay. I defended in time. The key thing was that I needed to get to c6 by the time his knight gets to c3. But now it's just going to be a draw, I feel. So he still has structural defects, but I messed the position up and. I don't have anything now. If anything, I'm probably worse. What's he doing now? Now he wants to get into c5. Well, I'm not going to allow that. I'll just guard that square. And I also want to prepare f6, e5. Horrible. Just a bad game. I, I played well out of the opening. He made several mistakes, but I failed to use them. Okay, uh, that is fine. So the knight is coming into c5. But if I allow him to take, I'm depriving him of this square, giving him a passed pawn, and I have the chance of bishop takes always. So I kind of prefer knight here, even though it gives him a passed pawn and allows him to undouble. I like the activity of my king and the option of taking on b4. So now if his king ever moves, I'm getting in. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. 
I just messed up, I just messed up. Uh. Oh, such bad play. Mm. Horrible. I just managed to lose this game. Okay, we will keep fighting, although I... I'm not sure I have a chance anymore. How do I complicate things? Trading of pawns brings you closer to a draw. So let's trade off some pawns. If I manage to trade off all the pawns and give up my bishop for his last pawn, then that's going to be a draw just stupid how could I have missed that okay this now gives me a chance to to do something at least because when he starts defending with his king I'm at least going to have an infiltration square for my king here so knight takes check here knight check I would have king c4 there okay so let's block his pawns knight takes king b5 Knight b3, king c4. If he, go knight, if he goes knight c5, I'm ignoring that. And just going knight c4 anyway. I need to try and trade off the pieces. Let's lock down the structure. I want to play f5 and h4 to block his king from coming in to create several targets on f4 and d4 yeah this should be a draw Who knows, I may be better in the end. I mean, he is almost in Zugzwang. So, okay, I need to play f5. And now, what does he do? He just needs to shuffle his pieces back and forward. I think he may be in Zugzwang.
I don't think I, I should have gone for uh, the A4 and the A3 and the B4 pawns. I think it's much better to just keep defending here because I don't see an easy way for him to break through. I'm trying to set up a blockade on B6. Ah, now I'm in Zugzwang. He just needs to move the king to d3. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have another option. This is lost, but I have to try it. Yeah, he's within the square. Yeah, there's nothing I can do here. Okay, I'm just going to resign. Uh, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> at knight c3 uh, black is slightly better knight c3 is imprecise move as i said so okay black has a slight edge on move six that's weird okay so i'm just better here better 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 minus one jesus castles bishop c6 rook c6 is fine queen d3 I took on f3, which is not a good move. 
Yeah, now rook f to d1, which is minus 2. Queen b6. Queen b5. Takes. Yeah, th this was, uh, my assessment was correct, it was just the one position for black. And everything was precise and they played correctly. So where did they mess up? Okay. Rook c4, so all the moves were fine. No, oh. rook back to c8 was a mistake. But even there I feel that should be okay. Rook takes is okay, rook c1. Yeah, now it's just a draw. And at which point did I blunder? Yeah, I have to take, I just have to take. Such a moron. So that was the mistake. The only mistake was that I lost my a4 pawn. That was just bad. But the whole game I played precisely and I had an advantage between 0.5 and 2. So here it all started to go wrong. Rook c2 was okay, best move. And he played g3. And I played rook to c4 and he played king e3. And now how should I continue? So okay, I would, let's say I played something. I wanted to play king f8 but I was afraid of knight c3. And if he plays knight c3, I didn't want to take the knight. Okay, apparently rook to g2. Rook g2, I was afraid of king f3. What happens after king f3? I give up the exchange. Ah, because then I win the a3 pawn as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I blundered my a4 pawn and didn't play well. Okay, one mistake, four inaccuracies from my opponent. I played two blunders. Yeah, okay, he just played a better game. Um, he played ridiculously bad at the start, but he managed to defend a worse position for 30 moves, which is incredible. And congratulations to him for that. I just. Rook to c8 is, is passive and I should not have done that. But I missed king f3, rook b2, rook b2, rook c3, check, king e3, rook a3. Giving my exchange for two pawns, which is obviously good. Okay, yeah, uh, tough game, but I need to improve to play better. I mean, th this was just horrible. Missing that my a4 pawn is hanging after knight c3, after having considered knight c3 for the last 20 moves is just wrong. Okay, uh, thank you for, much for watching, let me know what you think about the game, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.